a lack of effectiveness and something that we really should improve. Just raise your hand. Oh, yeah, yeah, the, oh, yeah, go ahead. Um, briefly, um, I, I've read the settlement agreement, but not a million times, and I just stumbled on something in one of the Kokel's documents that was doing the side-by-side -side analysis with a chunk of a, the actual old settlement agreement matching with the policy and looking at ways sort of like looking at biblical analysis or something like look at this version and look at that version and see how closely they match and i just happened to turn to section 130 and everyone needs to just think about section 130 it is the most protective beautiful portion of the settlement agreement because it is the prohibition on retaliation intimidation coercion any kind of adverse action that might arise to anyone within or on the outside of the force. So that is both protective of officers who become whistleblowers, and it's protective of us if we begin an IPR complaint. But we do know, as a matter of fact, that many of us who have possibly skeptically engaged in the system have faced very severe egregious retaliation. So for me, the assessment that there was a partial compliance with the anti-retaliation measure was a stretch. It was more like egregious, systemic, malicious retaliation. And I don't want to think that. I want to think we're good at heart and that we can get over that. But we need to talk about retaliation. V, did you want to say something?